All right, that sounds pretty good. Hey, the so some of you guys are admiring the scan lines that are here. I, you should know that some of that is artificially added by me. Um, if I uh, if I had my default settings here, the, the scan lines wouldn't be as pronounced. But in order to make it look like we're kind of playing on a CRT, um, I actually went into my upscaler settings and, and played around with things. Uh, so it's been it has been one hot fucking moment since we've played this game. Um, it's been one week. Uh, it's we haven't played in t since like January or something. Um, I got pulled in to do a ton of reviews, and then I had to go to GDC to give a talk. And work got busy, and our company got sold. <laughs> um, so I I just couldn't. I didn't have time for it. Uh, which is a total bummer, but we're back at it. So, Skies of Arcadia, wonderful Dreamcast RPG, my favorite game of all time. Um, the story so far: uh, <laughs> um, uh, two pirates, uh, Vise and Ika, two friends, uh, were raiding a ship belonging to the Valuan Empire, and they had uh, the the Empire, the bad guys, had just kidnapped a. Uh, a, a strange young lady called Fina. Uh, as they bring her back home to tell her about their pirate life, they see a falling moonstone that uh, ends up falling in some ruins. They go to pick it up. Um, while they are away in the dungeon, uh, the bad guys attack and they kidnap your dad and Fina and everybody else. And now we are going on an adventure to, uh, to get them back. And we probably <laughs> probably won't get through Valua tonight, but we're gonna play hopefully a little bit. So we're sailing off on our own little crappy ship. Everything about this game makes me happy. Um, we're gonna play through all of this. It's just, I gotta find uh, something that resembles a schedule again. That's Vise's mom. Which is, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have as many astute things to say right now. I'm just, I, mean, I think I'm overcome with the emotion of being back here and playing this, uh, this game. The overworld map is just flying in the sky. Uh, except I'm getting clipped on that guy. It's just you're in the sky. It's really, really great. There are some random battles. This game is kind of notorious for having a lot of random battles. I never thought it was like prohibitively like too many battles, but some people complain about it to the point that when they ported it to the Dreamcast, or the Dreamcast, to the, um, to the GameCube, they reduced the amount of um, the amount of battles. I probably won't hit this. This is a looper. They dodge a lot. They have high magic resistance. Oh, I actually hit. Um, and if you kill them, you get a decent amount of experience. Um, they're kind of like this game's version of Dragon Quest slimes. So we're going north, north towards Valua. That's Shrine Island, where we did our dungeon the first time we uh, played. We played up through our first dungeon. Am I going to play Dragon Quest XI on the... Um, Switch? Probably. I think I will. Um, the Switch has been really cool for getting giving me a chance to play things that... I've missed or that I haven't been doing as much with. Like, I've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma, which I think comes out next week or something. Uh, it's phenomenal and I love yeah. it. And I think getting a chance to play Dragon Quest would be really great too. Um, all sorts of stuff would be really fun to, fun to play, I think. Um, if that was where that they, was we were talking about this the other day, if that's where they brought like, 
Maybe the updated version of Persona or something. I'd probably play that there. The the I keep on saying Dreamcast because they're playing on a fucking Dreamcast. Um, it's great stuff. Um, wow, how do I trigger the encounter that I'm trying to trigger? I'm trying to trigger the next story event. This is a maraca. They have high defense. Sometimes they drop items that, uh... Give high defense. Counterattack, so we win. I'm gonna try and do a lot of exploration along the way, which means I'm gonna try and find a lot of hidden items. I'm gonna try and find... Um, discoveries and things like that as I go. I'm gonna try and find all the chams, which are these things that you give eventually to Fina. Um, to, uh, to, to power up her weapon. Um, so... Um, I'm gonna be picking up most of the extra stuff. The only downside is I won't be able to level up Fina's weapon to maximum on the Dreamcast because although I have the data somewhere, by which I mean it's in like a a vault on my PC where I keep archives of like Skies of Arcadia stuff, um, in order to get the final upgrade material for her, you need to download um, what was, I guess, free DLC. We didn't really call it DLC at the time, but you, you would get it through dial-up. Um, I could probably add that to my memory card somehow. I just haven't bothered. Hey, so now we're going to see, for the first time in the uh, game, this is a giant whale named Rachnum. little wrinkle in our plan. My controller, if I put my controller on, if I just hold it up a little bit, you can probably hear the rumble. If I put it on my table, you probably hear that rumble a lot. This is a very rumble, uh, the Dreamcast in general, if you have a rumble thing in there, is very um, aggressive rumble. So it's a giant whale. What should we do? So you, every now and then you make choices. Uh, these choices give you um, rankings in your pirate rank, which can affect uh, certain things later on in the game, including what characters you can recruit for your crew. Um, is this the Dreamcast version? Yes, I'm playing right off of my Dreamcast. Um, otherwise, I would say in the, I would I would say like, hey, the, we're playing Skies of Arcadia Legends. Um, I like the Dreamcast version better, even though Legends has extra story content. Um, if only because, in, I, I say it every time, and by that I mean the last time we streamed this, I, I explained it to a lot of people, is that I think I like the Dreamcast version better because it doesn't have to compress the audio to fit all the data on the disc. Because the GameCube is using mini, like, discs, um, in order to get everything on there, it's two discs, and in order to make it fit on those two discs, it compresses the audio a ton, to the point where I think the music sounds not very great in that version. Um, and I think the music is a pretty essential component to the experience, so. Um, my dream would be a, a PC port that had all the Skies of Arcadia Legends content, but hey. had good music. Like, just not compressed um, music. We're gonna meet our next party member. He's an asshole. Uh, he's an asshole and a professional grump. With a metal arm. He's hunting the the uh, the whale. Punches him. I don't know if I should read the dialogue or not. I feel like that would take up a lot of time. Um, you can read it. Uh, if, 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 if there's a reason you cannot, um, I'll still narrate events, like, by which I mean if, um, uh, perhaps, I don't know, we might have a, 
some blind audience members or things like that. I can still give beat by beat stuff. He's a grumpy man with an eye patch. We wrecked up on his ship after the Ark Oil destroyed our ship. It is a decently expensive game to buy a copy of. Um, it's not horrible. This and Skies of Arcadia Legends. I think Legends might actually cost more. I don't know. I, I my my copy of Skies of Arcadia Legends is um actually <laughs> back with my parents. Uh, so I have this version. I do have some GameCube games here, uh, including one thing that will actually play down the line: Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes. Um, I'm going to get started on my next part of the Metal Gear Retrospective sometime soon, too. Uh, which will be Metal Gear Solid. And I'll probably do some sort of mini-addendum about... Um, <laughs> about um, Twin Snakes. But I don't think I'll put that in a, a write-up about Metal Gear Solid. Um, my position on Twin Snakes is that it, it turns out that if you just add new game mechanics to a space that wasn't designed for them, you end up making your game really easy. Um, Twin Snakes is, is a pretty bonkersly easy game. Um, aye, aye. Just because you are able to do things in that game that the space does not isn't like designed for. Like, the minute that they give you free first-person aiming in that, which I guess you could probably say that the integral version of that game was kind of busted, because there was some first-person stuff in there, um, doesn't completely work out. No, it's not busted. Skies of Arcadia. Great game. Fabulous game. So we have to do a bunch of uh, annoying chores for Drachma right now. We'll get to Valua during this playthrough, no matter what. Maybe we'll play through all of Valua. It's actually not that long. But there are a couple, like, boss fights in between um, ship battles and things like that. We'll finally see a ship battle today, which I like the ship battles in this a lot. They're not too complicated, but they're pretty fun. So I really enjoy them. I don't remember if I picked up the Cham for Cupel in um, Shrine Island during our last playthrough in January, so I might have to do that on the sly at some point. There's a part of me that wants to get one of those nicer, um, newer Dreamcast controllers that are, like, comfortable. I like the Dreamcast controller a lot, um, but I'm used to it. Um, something about the way it lays in your hand now after so many years is, uh, it's a little awkward. It does have springy trigger triggers, though. I don't know if you can hear me hitting those triggers. Um, they're probably the springiest triggers that I've ever had on a controller. Am I going to get the PS4 to Dreamcast uh, controller adapter? No, I mean, I think I'll probably just get a custom Dreamcast controller, is what I'll do um, at some point. So the first time we played this, I feel like, so I feel this huge obligation, oh I have to go actually up, to do a lot of criticism or on the fly discussion about what this game is doing at any given point, and I will for certain stuff. I actually did a let's play of this back when I was a nobody, <sighs> um, and I'm still basically a nobody, um, but back when I had like pre pretty much no audience uh, on, my, on my own YouTube channel, and really broke into it back then back when my voice was a little deeper, if you get what I'm saying. And, uh, I want to be able to talk about it here. Um, 
I, I want to be able to talk about it with the benefit of like age and time and a lot more growth as kind of a critic and a person. Um, but also there's a part of me that's just like, ooh, fun pirates. Um, because it is, it's, it's fun fucking pirate stuff, man. It's so good. like little moments of character seeing Vi's be so enthusiastic about um this is really good i could put this in a widescreen aspect ratio but it would look terrible i think there's no way that i would put this in anything other than four by three the little jack and this guy's name is drachma if this isn't the most under-appreciated RPG, I don't know what is. Um, I don't know. I feel like... I mean, Sega knows about it. I've talked with them about it. I'm in the process of still talking with them about it, hopefully for some cool stuff. But... Um, you know, there's definitely... There's definitely this experience of... You know, the, it got the port on the GameCube, and then it's just kind of languished in relative obscurity. But the fans of it are very passionate, myself included. Um, they know the they they know uh, the game exists, 100%. Um, right, and also like at GDC, Reiko Kodama, one of the producers on this game, the producer on this game, got. Um, you know, she she got an award. She got like a kind of a lifetime achievement award. Um, I need to head over here to grab a discovery. She wasn't at GDC though. If she was, I would have loved to have um, talked to her uh, face to face. Well, here's the thing. Somebody's mentioning mentioning Sui Code in two in chat. I think more people. I think Sui Code in two, rec you know, had more broad. Um, broad acclaim overall than um, you know <laughs> oh that's right he shoots it out like that had more broad acclaim than Skies of Arcadia Skies of Arcadia was well received but Sui Coden 2 is one of those ones that people go back to and say like this is the best RPG of all time um, I don't think that's the case I actually Sui Coden 2 is not even my favorite Sui Coden but you know <laughs> um, special attacks. I'm having Drachma still use his blue moonstone to actually do some blue magic growth for the whole party. Um, we'll talk about the combat system and stuff too. Basically, you have two resources. You have magic, where every spell in the game costs 1 MP, but you have a finite amount of MP, so you have a finite amount of spells you can cast. And then you also have something that called spirit easy. points, which uh, generate at the beginning of every round, or you can use a special action called focus to generate extra SP while also taking up some um, time for your characters. Like, it takes up an action. Uh, it's a nice little system. It's nothing too complicated. Uh, there's a discovery. These are the guide stones. Um, you need to find discoveries to, to do a lot of stuff in the game. I'm gonna grab... I think these are Sky Sardis. Um, they better be. Let's find out. Um, what items do I have now? Sky Sardis 15. I'm doing this ahead of time because later on in one area of the game, a person asked me for t is going to ask me for 10 of these. Um, they're easy to get, right? Um, but uh, if I have them ahead of time, that way I can just give them the item when I meet them. It saves me a little bit of hassle. 
Um, the, ni the nice thing is I know this game kind of backwards and forwards. Um, although a couple of dungeons will probably spin me around a little. Um, let's have him attack the purple buddies. So I can do some like early groundwork for things that I need later, including finding discoveries, getting items that I might need. Anything like that that can save me a little bit of hassle. Uh, one thing we can do is Ika has a cool ability, but none of the enemies are like really close enough for it to matter, but I'll show it off anyway. Um, it's called Alpha Storm. It attacks all enemies on a line. She gets a better version. All of her attacks do various area of effect attacks, um, like for her specials. Uh, one goes on a line, two of them attack everybody in the room. And then she has an ability that negates all magic, which is super useful because there are enemies in this game that can use instant death magic spells. So she has a, she has a spell called um, Delta Shield, which will just negate any magic from you or an enemy. Um, and it can be a really good strategic tool. Um, right. Uh, so I'll just show off those skills for shits and giggles. Bring it on. Vise has an ability that guarantees counterattacks. Not that useful. Um, Delta, Shield. Delta Shield this here is the one that negates all magic. Very useful in the late game. But there's also... <laughs> There's a moment in like near the, after we do some stuff in Valua, we do another stuff, uh, another dungeon, and we have to fly through the sky in one area for a long time. And the enemies there can cast this thing called Eternum. Uh, the spelling, the like the name conventions for magic in this game. So like I'll use the blue, um, the green magic spells as an example. It's um. So it goes Sacri, Sacrez, Sacrum, Sacrulen. Um, uh, the suffixes um, at the end change. Uh, Eternum is a guaranteed uh, death attack unless uh, somebody like has like negation against it, which is really rough to have to deal with at an early point Sun's in the game. I don't know if I have any moonberries, but the first one I get, I'm gonna give to Drachma. Um, it'd be very cool for Aika to have her next special ability, but which is, uh, it's useful, but ah, give me moonberries. Moonberries are what you use to unlock people's um special attacks. This is Sailor Island. There's gonna be a bunch of hullabaloo here because Drachma's gonna be like, see you later. gonna go get drunk. I think for like relatively basic 3D characters they're pretty great. Um, they use the facial expressions to a lot of uh, good advantage. Um, Vise's attacks are all very good except for the fact that he has um, like counterattack you'll never use and you'll basically never use skull shield either. Um, this is the discovery guild. All the things I've found, I can come here. Um, well, it's the Sailor's Guild. But I can tell him the things I've found. Uh, and get a little bit of money in the process. Uh, not a ton of money, but still some. Which is good. I'm gonna run around and grab some stuff. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do ahead of time... This is Lawrence. If they have a name, they're kind of important. 
Uh, he can join my crew later once I have my own ship. Spoiler alert, you get your own ship, because hell yeah, you do. Um, over here, there's another character who we'll talk to, just so I can talk about something. They can also join your crew. So this is Pinta. Um, Pinta with his little uh, wonderful belly. Um, Pinta wants to find every single item in the world. That's his dream. His, like, One Piece dream. Uh, so Pinta is involved in something called Pinta's Quest. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the memory card for the GameCube, the standard memory card for the GameCube, is this thing called a VMU. He calls it, he mentions it right now here. It stands for Visual Memory Unit. It's, uh, it's, it's a memory card that also is kind of like, um, like a small handheld device. If anybody in chat, if you're old enough like me, or I mean, maybe you're young enough and you know, it's kind of like a Tamagotchi. Um, and you can use that to like access your data on the fly, or you can like play some games on it. Uh, Pinta's Quest is a game that you can play Pinta Quest on your um, VMU, and any of the items that you find while playing Pinta Quest, you can get in game. So if you're playing Pinta Quest and you find a bunch of moonberries, you bring that back into the game with you. Um, and you just give your moonberries to all your characters. Um, they're super cool. Yeah, somebody mentions they eat batteries uh, a lot. Uh, yeah, the, the, the batteries for the VMU were basically like small watch batteries. Um, I... Oh, it doesn't even matter. I can't pick up chams yet. Because I haven't even learned what chams are. Um... Which is really cool. We're gonna talk to the ship guy, which I believe will trigger our next story event, because he'll be like, I heard about this brand new exciting cannon. Listen to what the merchant has to say. They're selling a cannon called the Harpoon Cannon in Valua. Yeah, it's kind of like the pocket station for people who know what that is too. Um, also, the controller of the Dreamcast has a little hollowed out point in the plastic where you can see the screen of the VMU at any given time. And the game will show certain things on the screen. So right now I have like a little digital version of the pirates, like the blue rogue flag. Later on, when I find certain hidden items in the world, like a character will pop up and do some interacting there. Um, it's, it's nice. It's really cool. Now that I've talked to the merchant, I can go back to Drachma. Tell him about some stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, there's, you know, there's a treasure chest I want to pick up before some of this stuff, too. Um. There's an item I want to pick up later, but I won't do it. So we're going to be like, hey, we heard about this cannon that can kill your, uh, friggin... No, the way that you can play Virtua Tennis without looking at the TV because of the VMUs, because it tells you when to, where to move. It tells you to move, like, left or right. Beat around the bush is the right pirate choice here. You hear the little big chime at the end there. It means I leveled up my pirate ranking. I'll show you what that is in my menu in a second. Am I going to stream Super Robot Wars? I could stream all sorts of Dreamcast stuff. I could play Kiss Psycho Circus, which is the officially licensed Kiss first-person shooter, which we will not play because it's bad. Uh, but it is a thing that exists. When I met um, <laughs> when I met uh, Hideaki Itsuno in San Francisco at GDC, I told him how much I really liked Power Stone. Um, 
I don't really do a lot of time. Uh, when, you know, when I get to, this is my job, I get to meet a lot of people who end up making things that I liked when I was a kid. Um, I don't very often sit back and go like, oh my gosh. Um, but I did tell Kitsuno-san, I said, hey, um, by the way, I love Devil May Cry and everything, but boy, I played a ton of Power Stone. Yeah! Um, and I liked Power Stone 2 as well. Stream Grandia 2 when they're done. I would have to buy a copy of Grandia 2. I actually don't own a copy of Grandia 2. I don't like Grandia 2 nearly as much as I like Skies of Arcadia. Which, to be fair, I don't like anything as much as I like Skies of Arcadia, but... Um, I never was as, as excited about Grandia 2 as some people. I probably have a Dreamcast Magazine demo disc with, like, a Grandia 2 demo on it. I could just play... So there's this part of me that wants to um, do an entire series on our YouTube channel. Presuming... I, I don't even know what the rest of our year is going to look like. We just got bought by people. My future is weird. Um, but if I had a chance to work on some video production stuff, gosh, I would love to... I've always had this uh, thing in my head about a series that I always wanted to call, like, Dream Castaway, where I just play through all the things on the Dreamcast demo disc, one at a time. Um, I think that'd be super fun. Uh, it'd be very niche. Uh, I need to head over here because there's a treasure chest I want. With repair kits, which is very useful. Uh, where's the inn? Because there's a treasure chest I should pick up at the inn too. It's not that important, but I want it. I could definitely play Grandia too. I think some people, I mean, you could maybe convince me that that game has better combat, but I really like Skies of Arcadia's uh, systems. Um, one of these rooms has a treasure chest with some gold in it. Or I think, I think it does. Our boss, Jim! I saw Jim today. Yeah, we're no longer with Univision. I should always be saving. You can see right there, if I zoom back out, the little thing on the left there is what the VMU looks like. Am I playing on the Dreamcast? Yes, I am. I am absolutely playing on the Dreamcast. Why is my why is my command not firing? <laughs> um, I am playing on the Dreamcast. I'm using a RGB Mini Frame Meister to upscale to 1080p, and I the scan lines you're seeing aren't real scan lines. Um, but I think they're good. Oh, that's right. We have to talk to the merchant here. Oh, wait. What? Wait, who do I talk to first? I'm getting my stuff out of order. <laughs> I think the scan lines make things feel cozy. Oh, I, you know what? I'm, I was in the right place. I was just talking to the right person. I need to talk to the guild master at the uh, Sailor's Guild. Because he's going to be like, hey, you need a passport. Why the Dreamcast version over the GameCube? The music is better. And also because that's the version that I own. Um, I like the original better than I like Legends, if only because the music isn't, isn't compressed. Um... Legends has all the Moonfish stuff. Legends has the story content with uh, Piastol. It has, you know, the bonus boss fight against Air Pirate Vigoro. It has a bunch of cool stuff. Um, but I, I, I don't. I want to play a version that sounds good. Um, it's the closest I get to being a video game snob about like vinyl, <laughs> like. I was talking about this with Paul today for something else. We don't have like a video game version of like 
listening to it on vinyl, besides just playing on original hardware. Um, whenever I want to, or whenever I can, um, I like playing on original hardware on the earliest versions of a thing. Because um, I think it's just a good way to keep in touch with kind of the history of a medium. Uh, this guy's a merchant from Nazar, which is like the desert kingdom. Playing on a CRT is important too, yes. Um, I have a CRT in my apartment, but I have no room. No, it's big. Uh, I have no room, so I'm streaming from my bedroom. Um, I, I don't have the room to um, put a CRT in here. I don't know where I would put it. I think uh -huh. I have an idea of where I could put it, but it would be a very awkward fit. So we're going to help this pirate, this, not this pirate, this merchant get back to Nazar without getting attacked by pirates. And, uh, He'll give us his uh, uh, passport to help us get to Valua, which is good. Um, for the record, the pirate ranking thing I was talking about is for Vise. It says Vise the Blue Rogue, right? As the game progresses and you make better pirate choices and you fight more battles or run away from more battles, um, the game will adjust your pirate ranking accordingly. The number one thing you can do is find everything in the game and become Vise the Legend. Um, but there's also, like, Vise the Pirate King and other things like that. Would be would playing Skies of Arcadia while watching me stream Skies of Arcadia be too confusing? Only if you were, like, totally at like, two seconds behind me or, like, two seconds ahead of me and we were, like, overlapping with each other all the time. I think that could be kind of funny, but I don't know. So we're going to do an air pirate battle, a ship battle in a minute. Because spoiler alert, we are going to run into some pirates. You got to Ixataka, or as it's called in Japan, Montezuma. Um, in Japan, it's not called Ixataka, it's called the Kingdom of Montezuma. Ixataka is great because Horteca has some of the best uh, music in any town, in any RPG. It's really good. We have to fly through like a tunnel to get them to Nazar. Good thing is like the game pretty much points you straight where you need to go. Uh, we can't go through these sky rifts yet. yet. Um, you can see there's a town on the other side, but we can't go through them yet. We will be able to. The music is changing a bit because we're in a desert area. Do, 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 do. Which is pretty good. <laughs> I see Tony in chat. Tony, for those of you who don't know, has like the biggest skies of arcadia collection that i can think of um i'm mind-numbingly jealous of that collection um it's astoundingly good um, just all sorts of stuff i want to find i know they exist i know at least one existed I want a cupel, cupel plushie. <laughs> you are no one. We're all no one. Actually, why am I doing that? Drachma hits like a truck. So there was a Cupel plushie. Because there was also a Fina plushie. 
I don't know the context of it. There might have been only one of each. Um, but I would love them. Yeah, I'm not even sure if, like, there's, like, where you would get it, right? How you would even find that thing. Um, but it's cool. Serves up right. Drop a moonberry. Oh, well, they dropped an item. Um... Oh, I haven't bought any upgraded weapons for anybody. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll see- I mean, I'll be able to get new weapons, um, or some weapons of value. Uh, actually, I can- you know what? Uh, hmm. I should pick up stuff at Sailor's Island. Items make a difference in this game, and I kind of want some. This is, uh, Baltor's ship. Uh, he's a dummy. Yeah, see, that's what I know, too, is that Itsuki Hoshi had one. Um. The artist who did all those character designs, and then the manga stuff. If I had known so I I've bitched about this before I, I so I have a, I have a tattoo that's Fina's tattoo and I like it I like my tattoo but if I had known that there were like more reference materials to get like even more accurate versions of it I would have used those instead of like whatever I had um, I'm gonna get a couple more Sylvite. So, th there's a race of people called the Sylvites. Spoiler alert, not really. Spoiler alert. Um, and they have cool tattoos. And I'm gonna. So, I have Fina's on my arm. I'm gonna get a couple more runes and glyphs down my arm. I'll just have my arm covered in um, all these glyphs. They're really simple. I don't. They don't. I don't have to do intricate work with a tattoo artist. I can sit down for one session. They can bam out some lines, right? But for me, it has significance. This is our first um, air pirate ship uh, battle against Baltor. He's a dummy. Um, so there's a grid. Eventually it will be a 4x4 grid, for now it's a 3x3 grid. Um, and I get to choose my things and then choose what turn I, I do those actions. Um, so I'm going to focus for the first two turns, then I'm just going to fire. Um, this one doesn't count too much is like not too difficult because first off you can heal um i also have repair boxes but i can you can use before you get magic cannons to fire magic attacks you can still use healing magic in this game it's a very odd loophole um and actually i will turn around to sailor's island because um yeah I'll get some armor. Um, when it comes to stuff for later on, uh, after Valua, I'll need to go to Sailor's Island so I can buy a, um, a secondary cannon for my ship because it'll be useful get, again in a boss fight like t four hours later. But see, I can use healing magic or, like, buff magic. So I could buff myself to do, like, a buffed critical cannon attack and then heal at the end of the round. Like, this is a pretty solid round, considering I don't have a lot of options this early in the game. Just buff all my stats, fire the cannon, and then 
heal. That's pretty good. My girlfriend's playing this game too, which is why I decided to be like, I need to get back to this. And she's liked it mostly, but she does say that the ship battles can feel kind of slow. Um, for me, ship battles are these big things about like expansion and contraction of like pacing. So a lot of battles will start slow and then they'll build to like these big explosive climaxes on critical squares or after certain actions. And then they'll slow down again for a little bit of um, a slower pace. And then they, they kind of, if gameplay was an accordion, right? You're squeezing in for the important moments and then pulling out and giving room. Um, Uh, occasionally you get all these nice little moments to do stuff. This one's very easy, just go go behind him and you get a entire round of critical attacks. And he can't hit us because he doesn't have. Cannons, that can hit us. So this fight's basically free. Uh, maybe we'll get him here. Hope we do. Yeah, we probably will, or we'll get him in the next round. It's so funny. I always forget how small the little jack actually is. And then I see it, like, relative to other ships. It's actually a pretty small ship. Yeah, we got him. I fucking love this game. Do, 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 do. He dropped a thing called a captain's stripe, which I think the game explains, but you use them after certain ship battles to boost your ship's attributes. It's something very easy to forget that you have them, so every now and then you just check and you're like, do I have any captain's stripes? Uh, Baltor is a dope. I love him. Good moment. Good moment for drachma. <laughs> of just smacking them while they do their pose. It's a funny g game sometimes. Oh, Baltor is not dead. People do die in this game, but very often it's like, ah, we just beat the pirates and then got away. Because in a lot of ways, this is like a playable Saturday morning cartoon for like the first two-thirds, and then the last third turns into an occasionally subversive uh, JRPG. Yeah, he does explain Captain Stripes. Um, Skies of Arcadia does this thing where it spends a majority of the first... Wait, how do I use my goddamn Captain Stripes? It, a majority of um, the first parts of the game like... Playing a lot of tropes, um, very straight, uh, and then in like the latter end, flipping a lot of the expectations that it and like a lot of the things that it's set up kind of on its head. Um, uh, not not in astounding ways, not in ways that even make a lot of like meta textual commentary on the structure of JRPGs or anything, but just in ways that kind of play with. Um, the setup of, hey, we have this thing that's very traditional, and by the end of it, we're going to tweak it around just a bit. Um, it's kind of present in the way that it handles the relationship of Vi's Ike and Fina. It's present in some stuff with the two main villains. Um, nothing too subversive, but still a little playful. Plays around with the tropes. Right. Um, this game is in a lot of ways just, it's, it's a very straight reconstruction of, of, of a JRPG formula that had been 
Um, you know, this is also around the time that you get things that are like Final Fantasy VII, and you're gonna get your Chrono Crosses and stuff. You're gonna get people... Ironically, both of those games have Masato Kato involved. Um, uh, games that are a little bit more um, uh, kind of folding in on themselves in terms of how they examine things or like the characters that they have. Um, I can see, you can see one of the discoveries, by the way, up there in the sky. That blinking satellite. We can't get to it yet. Um, and there's Maramba on the other side of the Sky Rift, which we can't get to either. Um, so this game, you know, this game comes at a time where JRPGs are kind of, you know, experimenting with what they can do with mood and tone, and a lot of ways that that tone becomes kind of um, transgressive in certain ways. And then this game kind of um, keeps to a very traditional formula, um, which made it pretty refreshing, um, all things considered. Like, there's some pretty banana stuff that happens, but, you know. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of things that it does that um, weren't always conventional at the time, uh, particularly for its world building. Um, some of those ideas are like, I don't, they're not half formed, but they're just not completely there yet either. Like the idea that I can buy fish of a different kind and sell them for, for like more money somewhere. Like that's something that, you know, games will build more robust economic systems. Um, but this game has bits and pieces in there where like that stuff comes into play. Um, but in general, my, my opinion on Skies of Arcadia is that most of its brilliance comes from its um, elegance. By which I mean, uh, it achieves the greatest amount of effect with the least amount of effort. Um, we did it! Elegant things to me are not complicated things. Um, so when I talk about elegance in game design, I always mean something that achieves... And, and right, effect is relative, right? It's relative to the player. Because um, <laughs> it's, it's an emotional quality. Um, but to me, uh, uh, elegance has always been... You know, how can we achieve the greatest amount of impact without the, you know, with the least extraneous amounts of, um, you know, busy work, uh, extra systems that don't really contribute too much, um, right? Uh, there's this tendency, especially, at, I mean, in JRPGs in general, right? But I think especially as you're heading into um, the early aughts, to have, uh, especially JRPGs, that get really complicated with their systems because they realize that they can systematize like everything, right? Because math, when, when you, yeah. like battle systems and everything else in games, they're just abstractions. Math is just an abstraction of an action, right? Um, and we play along with those abstractions. We, we play along with the, the abstracted n numbers and all those values, and we accept their validity as, as, uh, as a way of bringing some sort of structure into the game world, right? Um, but it is possible to get, like, I think, sometimes overboard with that and kind of um, get really systemic in a way that doesn't help the game necessarily. And one thing I appreciate about Skies of Arcadia is that it's simple. It's simple. Um, it, its systems are not complicated. Um, its battle system as, is basically as traditional as can be with a little bit of added cadence. Um, uh, but it, but it doesn't do a lot of systemically complex things, and it that doesn't do too mean. many like narrative complex things. It's a very honest game, um, and that honesty is pretty affecting to me. Um, that's one of the things that I think gives it, for me, so much staying power and so much efficacy. Um, a lot of people in chat, kind of as I've been talking and rambling, have been saying, you know, this game, the thing that stood out to them is how optimistic it was and like how much they really cared about these characters. Um, like, it's a very straightforward, very open game about what it is. It doesn't purport to be anything else. It doesn't try and trick the player. Um, and there's a, there's some value in that. There's some strength and value to that. Uh, but I want... 
some items. I don't need to buy a new weapon for Vi's. Um, but I will buy... armor for them. And I actually... Well, actually, no. Do I need to get anything for Drachma? Do I find anything for him soon? I find the Assassin's Blade um, in the dungeon. I find heavy armor. I... I, if I want it later, I can just get it in Valua, but for now, I guess we're good. I should sell my stuff, though. The person rolling on the ground, I'm pretty sure they're like, the, there's somebody who's freaked out by like how big the sky is or something. I forget. Yeah, he just doesn't like being in the sky. <laughs> he's he's a, he's a sailor who is a little picky about stuff. It's so funny. My my recollection of um, some stuff in this game is going to be loose, even though I play it like every other two years or something like that. Um, in the moment, I remember most of it, and then I'll pause every now and then and probably make mistakes uh and then the nice thing is value is just like dead north very easy to spot and we're gonna see um <laughs> this really screwy gate into value which is just, you know, scary stuff. Um, the value of stuff is very basic, but I do appreciate that at least this is a game that doesn't pretend that like economics doesn't exist. Um, this is this is a game whose conception of of the world is very very simple, but is still like, hey, you know what sucks? Like inequality, um, which is like a child's approach to that sort of stuff almost, right? Compared to the complexities that you could have in a game or in a narrative. Um, but it's also like, this is a game that doesn't pretend like colonialism doesn't exist because that that's like a big thing in all of the stuff in Ixotaka. Um, it's nice to have a game that touches on these things, maybe in a light kind of Saturday morning type way, but that also just doesn't ignore them for the sense of, um, <laughs> for the sense of, like, overwhelming optimism. Like, this isn't a game that pretends that problems doesn't ex don't exist. I don't know. Um, granted, a lot of those problems are relegated just to the evil empire, but... You know. Oh, yeah, our chat eats li eats links. Somebody says... So, I, rem I remember that Reddit post, and the thesis was basically that there's a way of timing your A button presses to get a better chance of countering kind of like you're doing timed hits in Super Mario RPG. Um, I don't know how true that is. Um, I've also never found countering to be essential, but, you know. God bless them for breaking that down. these you know is it not is Moobot not doing anything because Moobot's not in chat I enabled commands and it's just not doing anything right now that's kind of funny I'll figure it out yeah it is really cool that like people figured that out like two decades later you know yeah, we don't get we don't get bounty uh, battles in this, which is kind of a bummer. That's one of the things I do like about Skies of Arcadia Legends is like 
fighting, um, you know, the, the false Vi's Ica and Fina fighting, um, all the different bounties is pretty fun. Yeah, I'm not too worried about talking about spoilers um, in this. Um, I kind of already gave up that Fina's a Sylvite, even though that doesn't mean much. This is Galcian and uh, Ramirez. Pretty decent villains, all things considered. And now we get to see all of the, or most of the, um, <laughs> most of the admirals. There's Alfonso. We meet, we uh, dealt with him in the first uh, dungeon. He's a piece of shit. Alfonso is the fucking worst. Um, he's just a, a, a noble <laughs> and and a total asshole. <laughs> This is your first Twitch comment ever, somebody says. Man, I love this game. It would be amazing if they did a remake. My first Twitch comment ever, by the way. I'm old. Old is relative. <laughs> um, I'm getting older. I'm turning... Uh, a particular age this year that I don't want to acknowledge. Because uh, it's only going to go up from there. That's Gregorio. He's cool. This is Vigoro, he's a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> not great, not a great dude. Vigoro, this is Beleza, she's cool. You just turned 25 and you're depressed? I'm older than that, my friend. <laughs> But I'm starting to feel like an adult. Which is like... <sighs> Impressive. Uh, Alfonso, uh, they find out that he's lying. He said that he was betrayed by like his captain or whatever. Uh, the Blue Rogues let his crew back. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, let his crew go, and they were like, hey, hey. Huh. Um, you know. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me, is that when you turn a certain age, it's actually not that bad. My girlfriend's older. Huh? She doesn't seem to mind it. <laughs> um. So now... Alfonso is no longer Admiral of the Fleet of the Mid-Ocean, and he's going to appoint... Uh, we'll see it happen later on when Galcian talks to Empress Theodora, but he's going to appoint Ramirez as the new Admiral. Ramirez has a ship that you see for like all of two seconds in this game. It's called the Monoceros. Um... And uh, it's a pretty decent looking ship, and it's like you see it once. Uh, which is very, very good. Uh, some of the ships in this game are very cool. A lot of the value and stuff is good. This has my favorite, I mean, there's a, there's a ship that you get later on. It's very good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the Monocero is like, it's hard to even tell that it's that it's different those two times though, because like, you barely ever see it in the game compared to like, because you fight against the Lynx, you fight against, you know, the Origa, you know, you fight against a lot of admirals in this game, but you never, there's not actually, um, you know, by technical definition, by which I mean a battle against a ship, a ship battle against Ramirez. Um, wow. There's technically something that might qualify as a ship battle against Ramirez, but it's not quite the same. Mm. 
Yeah, the Delphin is. God, it's such a good ship. Hmm. Uh-huh. Hmm. Very, very good ship. Uh, we're going to meet a new character here. His name is Marco. I think the first thing we see him do is pick his nose. Which is a very good animation. Um, as I go through this playthrough, I'm going to save all of our playthroughs here on Twitch. Maybe once they're all done, I will put them on our YouTube. I don't even, like, I don't know. Like I said, our situation is in such a weird flux. Here's a little Huskra. He's kind of grumpy because everybody's sad here. Um, this is kind of an upper city, lower city thing in the sense that it's literally called that, but I also mean that in the sense of, like, Midgar, right? Um, except this one is more explicitly to do with, like, class than, like, just, like, wealth aggregation. Buddy. There he goes, he picks his nose. This is Marco. Hey, I'm Marco. You guys look like sailors. Stupid ones. That's probably what he sounds like. Yeah. That's a good nose flick. Uh, booger flick, though. For those of you who haven't uh, quite grokked to it yet, Valua is our, um, like, Imperial Spain stand-in. Empress Teodora, Marco, Prince Enrique. I say Enrique because I think it's funnier, because it makes me think of Enrique Iglesias. Iglesias. Let's go down this elevator for a second. Because I need to go grab a Moonberry. So I can finally give Drachma his ability. My girlfriend was playing this game. She did like three random battles in a row and got moonberries from every one of them. And I'm fucking pissed. I want that. I want like tons of moonberries early in the game. Really great uh, faces in this game. running around. The Moonberry is down here. It's, on, it's down a little further. Okay. Pretty much every NPC in the game is unique, yes. Which is really cool. I'm running around because I forget where the moonberry is, except for the fact that there is a moonberry. You ever have that happen in, ga in a game where, like, you know there's an item somewhere, but you just don't remember? We won't get Vise the Legend because I won't be able to download. Do you need Hemachow Island for Vise the Legend? You must because you need all the chams and shit, right? I won't be able to download Hemachow Island. I guess I, maybe I would. I have that data, but not on my Dreamcast. I'm not sure the best way to get that data onto my Dreamcast, because I'm an idiot. Wait, where is where is the... Uh, chams aren't necessary for it? That's, a, that's awesome. That's, like, actually really lenient. It's by these those barrels, somebody says. Oh, that's right. It's back here. That's fucking sneaky. That's awesome. That bums me out though, because I want I want final pupil. I think it's really important and really interesting that the person who gets the um who gets the uh highest attack weapon in the game is Fina and not Vise. 
Um, it's one of those ways that I think Skies of Arcadia, when you look at it and squint, like kind of tilts your head a little, you see the ways that it's playing around with things every now and then. I can definitely go online with my Dreamcast. Probably. It's just gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird to do. Uh, where's the ladder? There's the ladder. I can. I can use the the tuna sword and 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 stuff. Yeah, I want that Moonberry. There's... It's pretty good. There's not a Moonberry in the Catacombs, though. But there are some weapons that I'm gonna want. I want the game to give me, like, just a ton of stuff. You can... You could probably just DM me that link on uh, Twitter. Because my chat doesn't do links because we happen to uh, be a Twitch stream for a very large web uh, website that sometimes has uh, very mad people uh, trying to do weird things. Um, if it ever seems like our, um, our chat is strict, it's because you have to remember that there's li literally a subreddit full of like bananas people who have named their subreddit after like... Uh, us. So, you know. Um. Where's the inn? That's what I'm looking for. Oh, boy. Oh, he's got a little... This is one of the times when you're like, oh, a modern game would have like a much more useful map. I totally forget where it is. It might even be down here. If it's not, we'll just go back on up. For all the times that I've played this game, it's still possible to get lost. I'm not going that way. Do, 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 do. It's it's weird to use the camera in this game because to do rotate the camera, it's your triggers. That could be it. You're right. Let's check. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I'll just have to see if I can download <sighs> Hamacho Island. Hmm. Thanks for coming to the stream. Um... It was... Was it the giant looper? Dun, 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 dun. 
Dun, 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 dun. They're gonna ex execute our buddies. They're gonna kill our dad. Let's sneak into the Colosseum. It's the right pirate's uh, choice. fight against uh Blagok Blailgok or whatever however you pronounce it he's a giant fleshy blob huh? weird jelly dude um who could it be You can see you can see bones inside of him. Uh he he pukes. This section is a little bit more finicky than it looks. Yep, the uh the zombies, the dudes with the bugs. I'll have to look through my, um... My external drive that I have, like, all this Sky stuff on. I think I have some files that I want to look at. He's like, oh, you'd probably act like a little jerkwad. I just want this on PC or something. It wouldn't sell well. I don't know. Maybe it would.
now we gotta go through the catacombs. Which isn't too bad. Um... One of the enemies here can drop a weapon for Drachma. But it's... it's a strange... It's a strange, um... Weapon, because it has zero accuracy, so you use it only for your special attacks. Which, speaking of... We should probably do this. Tackle! See, I wish I had enough for Spirit Charge. But I don't. Kind of. It's kind of bullshit. Having spirit charge would be so nice for these fights. We'll see how it goes. If we get the mace hand from uh, any of the mind stealers down in the catacombs, then we might equip it on Drachma and just have him tackle everything in the boss fight would actually be really interesting. Somebody says, I just signed up for Twitch because of this stream. That's very flattering in a way. I'm glad you're here. Oh, you know, it's going to suck when I have to do Dark Rift. Talk about if I'm getting lost right here in Lower City Valua, Dark Rift is going to fuck with me. Dark Rift, with the, one of the coolest discoveries that barely goes commented upon in the game. The Black Moonstone. Uh, all the enemies in this dungeon are, are fucking gross. I can hear my disk drive worrying. So one of the nice things about the Dreamcast is that it's loud. <laughs> So you can hear when a random battle's about to happen, like, way in advance. Some people would try- what they would do is they would listen for the first word and they would stop moving and you would try to avoid random battles that way. Um, I don't know if it ever really worked, but it was the thing people did. They were like, yeah, like, you can skip random battles if you just, like, stop running when you hear the disc. Good job, guys. What does she have now? Crystallis? Wow. But also, like, <laughs> I guess random battles can be annoying, but they're not too horrible, I think. Now we're in the green water, the green shit water. All the rundown gnarliness. But I can hear whenever there's going to be a battle, which is, it's so funny. It's such an interesting little quirk. Yeah, there's going to be a whole portion of this game. Well, not like portion, but there will probably be, probably be times where I'm going to do discovery hunting on my own. I'll do all the crew recruitment stuff still, but I won't. I don't know. I'll have, to think, I'll have to think about it. But there might be times where I'm just like, I'm gonna go get a bunch of discoveries so you don't have to see me grind out trying to get, like, Domingo for my crew. These are the Mind Stealers. They're actually one of the creepier enemies in the game. 
Oh, I should try and do that thing, the button, uh, the button sequence that actually lets you take off Vise's eye patch during the battle. <laughs> it's a very random thing, but it is a thing that you can do. Ha, that was easy. Do you have to do it on the stick? I forget. stick or is it on the pad? Let's try it on the pad. Tony put it in chat, which is good. Uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so there's a button sequence where you can take off the, um, yeah, he makes a little sigh too, which is actually kind of funny. But yeah, I think I think a lot of people don't know um, you can do that. I'm surprised that didn't take out the other ones. <laughs> clip it, clip it, so the world can always see the the eye patch coming off. Don't poison me or anything, please. That'd be gross. You can move your camera a little bit in combat, but it doesn't really achieve much. You can rotate the camera, but... It doesn't really affect things. My one major complaint about this game's combat is that a lot of things are dependent on positionals, and you actually don't have particular control over where your characters scan, uh, stand. Um, which is kind of crummy. Um, like to have, and also to like have enemies whose attacks to, you know, require positional stuff. We're about to fight the Executioner. He has two attacks that are positionals. Um, he has Shoulder Charge and then he has Sonic Wave, both of which can hit multiple characters at once. Um, if they're all stacked up, like, it sucks, you get hit. I think I should get Quicka now? No, I got Wevly. Oh shit. Whoa, I got a Moonberry though. Oh fuck. You know that thing I was saying before? Oh, does it really take two Moonberries for Spirit Charge? Fuck. Oh, I'm heartbroken. No. I was so excited. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely, like, I don't know. Um, no, I won't grind for a Moonberry. That wouldn't, that, that wouldn't really be fun. <laughs> this should give us the heavy armor and the other things, I think, though, so. At least we'll get some cool items as we run around into these side rooms. Actually, wait, what is their weakness? They're green. So. I'll take care of stuff. Give me one second, friends. I'm grabbing a, uh, I have a bag here. I'm thirsty and I have a bottle of kombucha that I want to grab. Listen to that right there, how exciting. It's just me doing my stuff. I need uh, delicious beverages for when I'm streaming. All right. So, actually, if he's if he's green, for the record, I don't need to change my um. My weapon on Vise. Wait, what is Vise's thing? It is red. Uh, 
Oh, Zivilin Bane? He doesn't show up until Temple of Pyron. Where you get the Rune of Ill Omen from him. You can skip the animations too if you want. I don't know why you would, but you can. I'm just showing it off to show that you can. Oh, whoa, that missed? Waste of a quick stat. That missed too. Counter attack? No. Of all the people to hit, Drachma is the one who hits. He misses stuff all the time. I suppose I should be um, switching back to green so that uh, Ika can learn. What's her What's her green magic right now? She'll probably learn Noxie next. Yeah, so she'll learn Noxie next. Right, I think so. Um. That should be a Pyrie box. Interesting. Um, but I tend to have, like, pour points into her purple magic pretty quick. Every character has, like, slightly different magic growth. By which I mean that, um... They have... Like, for some people to earn... Like, for Fina to earn Sakri, it's, like, 300... Maybe not even 300. It's like, it's a tiny amount of, of, of uh, magic experience points for her. But for, like, Drachma to earn it, it's a lot more. I forget what the actual values are. Because it would be brilliant if I could remember that stuff, but I'm not that smart. So there we go. making good progress. The Assassin's Blade is one of the cooler looking uh, weapons in the game. I like it a lot. You get a look at it. It's kind of got those like ridged edges. <laughs> that sounds weird when I say it out loud. Y'all know, know what I meant. Um. <laughs> um. This might affect my damage output here, but whatever. I want her to learn a little bit more green magic. Here go. Oh, the, the delicious sound of a critical attack. for like defense. <laughs> Why does Wise hold this sword like that? Somebody's saying in chat. I'm like, uh, he holds that one to like block. Huh, Maybe. That was easy. It's his defensive cutlass. Oh, I forgot to change her weapon. Her weapon uh, crystal color. I'm a flippin' dope. Streaming a game, even one that you love, means sometimes just accepting that you're going to make mistakes. He ziplines with it in the opening, yes. Yeah, look at that. The sky below. This is really, really good. Um, so good. I mean, he yeah. I mean, he he uses it in Cutlass in um, Pirates Wrath. Cutlass Fury. He does it a couple times. Like he uppercuts at one point. I, I believe. I believe he does that. I might be wrong. 
But that's what I think he does. Oh, I did it twice. That's some old school JRPG. <sighs> yeah, we're getting close to the boss here in a second. You can see it right there. It's fucking Freako Belly. Look at it, look closely, you can see the skulls floating around on the inside of it. Some gross shit. Uh, if you pay attention, the music will do like dynamic stuff every now and then. Um, when we lose HP, it'll be like really scary music, and then when we um, when we gain experience or like do better, we'll uh, we'll do that as well. Um, so. It's super tempting to... You know, we're, we're early enough in the game that I... Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, I can look at Drachma's por portrait to know like what color he has, but otherwise it's like, you can't even tell with this weapon what color he has, which is kind of funny. But we're gonna change to this thing's elemental weakness. It's gonna do some bile, some other stuff. You would think that it, like after this attack, you would think it would be like purple, but it's not. Oh, it's good I did that attack with Drachma. Oh, that's actually true. Change my element to the end before near the end of the fight. That's true. Let's try this. I'm just showing off the Pyre box. It's like a reusable Pyre uh, spell, except you're not using magic. Oh no, am I gonna have to use a Curia crystal? Probably. See, the music is changing to the Crisis version right now. No, don't use a Sakura's Crystal when I can just use Sakri. So you're like, Heather, why aren't you probably using Cutlass Fury right away? And it's because I'm an idiot who wants to use both that and Tackle in the same round for shits and giggles. I'm willing to blow the uh, MP and SP there for a second. This sucks, though. Cuphead. Um, I, my controversial Cuphead take is that I think the discussion surrounding Cuphead was like super boring because I don't think Cuphead is actually that hard. Um, <laughs> but that that's like me being a, a big pedant, right? Um, but I never thought like that whole discussion about like Cuphead and difficulty was just weird. I never bought it. Like, it was like the idea that it was like this big challenging game that gamers had to beat. And if you beat it, you were such a good fucking gamer. Because um, you can cheese that game in like a ton of ways. Let's try this. Arguably a waste of a Sakura's crystal, but what are you gonna do? I wanted to show both abilities in one round. I wanted to do like a really big damage round just for shits and gigs. It would have been an even higher damage round if I used the uh, Pyre, but. Whatever.
Right, I don't... Yeah, exactly. After Sekiro, I don't... I don't like difficulty discussions. You know, because everybody thinks that when, like, we posted our thing saying, like, hey, difficulty stuff doesn't ruin games, that we wanted... You know, we wanted Miyazaki-san to fucking... Make us a, our goddamn... You know, the... <laughs> give us an easy mode because we need it or whatever. It's like, nobody said that. Um, and I don't even think... I think Sekiro is, like, significantly easier than Bloodborne. But, like, that doesn't mean anything. Like, what I think easy doesn't matter because for other people it could be incredibly hard. Um, and the fact that we're not able to have those discussions is, like, always so disappointing. It always feels like a trap. Like we're walking into some sort of trap. Hopefully none of my characters die here. be out of crisis mode if I have a status effect? Maybe not. I don't need to heal it right now, though. Vise is in pain right now, so yeah. After the healing, maybe we'll get it back. I mean, this thing will be dead after Vise's attack anyway. I like the opportunity music a lot. It's really good. Fills me with hope. Those double digits! Bam, ba ba bam, bam! And then the thing the game doesn't tell you you should do, but you should definitely do, is a. Uh, heal up. How much do these give? It's like one HP each or something, right? Yeah. Am I playing on a GameCube? I'm playing on my Dreamcast. Um, you don't have to do this because you can just restart battles. Um, but I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I don't know why that command isn't firing off automatically right now. Moobot's being a pain in the ass today. Wish I knew why. Well, here's the thing I've said on a couple streams now, because it does come up, because it's just the topic right now. It's like, if anybody could do, like, an easy mode that I thought would be interesting and, like, not patronizing to people or whatever, like, it, I think it would be From. Like, From would do a very good job with it. You know, whether that's giving people the ability to summon, giving them more... Resurrections or whatever the fuck. Could be anything. Yeah, so we have to fight these friggin' little magic wardens and the uh, executioner. This fight is, um, for a lot of people, tends to be one of the first that really is uh, annoying to them. I like the little subplot with Marco. <laughs> I 
This can definitely be a tricky fight. The nice thing is that the, um... The Executioner actually doesn't have a lot of health. Um, but, you know, it's still a pretty tricky fight. Uh, the Spell Wardens don't make it uh, particularly easy. This is, like, the reason I want Spirit Charge is that if I had Spirit Charge, I'd be tossing out Cutlass Furies and Tackles left and right. Um, are these guys all yellow? They're all yellow, which doesn't matter because I have nothing that's a, a weakness to yellow right now. Yellow's, uh, yellow's only weakness is, um... is, uh, silver. So we're gonna attack the one on the left first. It's definitely a tricky fight. Focusing is only giving me one thing right now. Hey, at least he's not doing like tackle or whatever, right? If he does like Sonic Wave on Vice, he's gonna hit Drachma too, which will suck. But I do want Increm for this. Um, I think that Drachma will hit um, hard enough by itself. This will do a little bit more extra damage to me because I'm red. Red's weakness is, um, purple. Actually, does she doesn't have any red. She does. She is, only has Pyrie. Crystalli, Crystal is. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe casting Webley here. Um, if I'm at five now... How much am I? How much SP am I gaining per round? Four per round. Hmm. How much is Webley? Two. I'd have enough. Or I should. Let's let's do it. Her stats are a little busted right now, though. <sighs> yeah, that sucks. Uh, Dreamcast. They're just attacking Ika again. <laughs> the fucking Warden's gonna do a tackle and fuck us up, though. Which is not going to be fun. Yep. I bet you this kills Vise. If it hits Vise, which I think it will. Oh no, it only hit Drachma. That's actually great. Don't counterattack. Thank you. Lovely. I wonder if this will one-shot the Warden. It might. Yeah. Not bad. Thanks, Vise. Drachma will still probably do more damage to the Warden, so I guess we buff him with Increm and then just build up for tackles. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable strategy. Huh. Let's see what happens here. Moons, give me strength. 
Well, I think our HP is at like a certain threshold that it's still kind of not where it needs to be. It'll like once we do a little bit of damage here, it'll do okay. Oh, this sucks. This oh, this might only hit. Oh, it hit both. I oh, just gotta keep on doing damage. Moons, give me strength. A tackle will kill some of us, though, so we wanna do as much damage as we can. If he tackles Vise or someone here, like it, it would suck. It would just not be fun. We can't use tackle until like two more turns though, I think, at this rate. I'm praying for some criticals. There we go. So it doesn't matter. In the next like two rounds, this guy's dead. He's not used tackle a lot. That's kind of like great. So in this case, we'll just finish him off. We'll do the sure thing, right? I would... Oh, that might get her. <gasps> yeah. Wow, that sucks. She's not getting any XP. Can't take it back. What if I could? That sucks. It looks like we won. That totally blows. I like how much he uh, plays to the crowd here. Good for him. Ah, oh, that's that. The minute that it, they blocked that attack. I was like, oh, they're probably going to. <laughs> well, I mean, she's going to be a little bit even more underpowered right now because... But I mean, Ika's big thing is that she takes out trash mobs, right? For shits and giggles. Always save when you can. The rest of the of, of value is not hard. It's the two guards guarding Fina, and then the fight where you fire the harpoon cannon. And that's it. That's literally all it is. Wait, what'd you say, bud? Oh, something about the door that wasn't there before. For a minute, I was like, what did Marco just say? Hey, Dad. Oh, they, they're such good characters. It sucks that she uh, got knocked out at the end of that fight, though. Imperial Palace. Oh, the uh, like the uh, statue, like it was like a hidden place of worship or something. <laughs> we have to go save Fina.
our very own yellow moonstone. We only need one more moonstone and we get it when we rescue Fina. Well, we get it back on Pirate Island, but in theory we get it when we rescue Fina. The sacred crystals are nice, um, and the magic droplets. They're very clearly giving you those there to help you recover after the battle. And you know what? That's pretty great. Like, it's a pretty good move on their part. Oh, you know what's gonna happen to me, though? I'm gonna play some Pinta Quest. There's a statue, by the way. It kind of looks like a moon with stuff coming out of it. So maybe it has to do with the Reigns of Destruction. That's my, that's my Dark Souls lore theory thing right there. That's my, that's my Vati Vidya lore stuff for the evening. Oh, attacked from the back by a bunch of freaky dogs. Ow. Oh, nice counterattack though, guys. I'm proud of you, boy. What if he just countered every single attack? Do it, buddy. Ah. Don't cast Quicka. Quicka, the spell that you use pretty much only for fighting, um... <laughs> fighting the Origa. I don't use Quicka a lot. Um, pretty much only for the Gregorio fight. And that's about it. There's a counterattack. Increm you use all the time. Quicker, not not as much. Yeah, exactly. Well, we don't need to worry about uh, wanted or bounty battles in this version of the game, so that's good. She would be level 11 now, too. If it wasn't for... Friggin' bad luck at the end of that fight. Breaking my balls. You can see me slow down there, because I knew an encounter was coming. <laughs> Wow, attacked from the back by dogs again. Story of my life. Counterattack. Nope. I thought there was. <laughs> yeah, who hasn't been attacked by a ton of dogs? I live in Brooklyn. Do, 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 do. 
I'll heal again once I'm out of here. Am I going the right way? Yeah, I am. It just always feels like you're not. This is whole. There's the whole uh, scene with uh, another scene with Marco in a second. And Vise is like, "Yo, fucking, just follow your dreams, bud." And Marco's like, "Ah, oh, no one's ever told me that." Oh, one more boss battle. I'm well, not boss battle. One more battle. We can do the thing where we show Vise without his uh, eye patch again. Mind stealer. Oh, a couple. Did I do it wrong? Shit. Right, right, left, left, up, down, up, down, right, left. I fucked it up. Right, right, left, left, up, down, up, down, right, left. There it is. There you go. Scr almost screwed it up. Oh, because Drachma's not in our party. That little piece of shit. I can't round one. I yes. can't round one Alpha Storm. Here goes. Bunch of bullcrap. We didn't get his uh, his weapon from any of these drops. Any like, none of these mind stealers dropped the um, the mace the mace hand. Oh god, we're gonna get beat up by slimes and zombie people. Fucking hell, get out of here! Leave us alone! Oh my god, if I die in this random battle... What?! What?! Eternity?! I'm dead! If that hits, I'm dead! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> and fucking excuse me? Will I be able to run away right now? Well, fuck it. What?! What is this nonsense?! Oh no! Counterattack and kill the mind stealer. Yeah! Way to go, guys. Oh my god, what if. Oh! What if they. <laughs> What if they cast Attorney and I die? Oh no. Come on, counterattack Vise. Come on, buddy. Uh. Hey, uh, it got rid of one of them. Wow. I didn't know these guys could cast uh, Silver Magic. That's so wild. Counter track. I just got in her ass kicked like a couple times. So this is the end of the fight. What? Did it really? <gasps> oh no! That's amazing. That's awesome. Wow. Oh, it's a good thing we saved our game. It's a good fucking thing we saved our game. <laughs> Wow, that's bizarre. I've that, I've never had that happen, and I've played through this game like like ten times. Surely, in the double digits, the amount of times I've played through this game, I've never seen that. I didn't even know that they could use Eternity. Whoa, that's bananas. That's hysterical. The good news is, we don't have to go through, uh... Yeah, very, very speed run. It's never happened before. Yeah, my speed run would be dead by now, right? That sucks. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, I thought the first time that we encountered, like, Eterni or Eternem was in South Ocean or whatever. Or Mid-Ocean, whatever ocean it is right now. 
There are speedruns of this game, though. So, like, I, I have a... I follow a bot that tells me whenever there's a new world record in speedruns. Uh-huh. And every now and then I see one for Skies of Arcadia, and I'm like, whoever's doing this is my hero. I'm mind boggled that I died to in the that fight of all things. I mean, worse things have happened. I'm surprised like I didn't die during the boss fights. Yeah, look at that weird thing there. Well, I mean, like, if it's just Eternity, here's, here's, here's famous last words. I'll risk it. But the minute I know that there's a turn um or something, no way. Like, I'm Delta Shielding. I'm, if I have Gilder, and for whatever reason, I don't want a Delta Shield. I don't know why I would do it that way, but I'll, like, Aura of Denial or something, right? people in chat who, who use Gilder in the final dungeon ever use a... First off, why are you using Gilder in the final dungeon? You should probably have Enrique. And then also, uh, how many of you are like, let's have him use Aura of Denial and not like Gunslinger? That would be weird. That would be like weird tactics for those characters. It would make no sense. Never watched Disguise of Arcadia speedrun. Are there sequence breaks? I don't know. My gut of guts says probably not, right? I don't know what they would be, but... You know. Gilder is the one person people take into the dungeon in the speedrun? That's so interesting. I wonder why that would be. More AoEs or something? Back off. Oh, Mubot is picky. Sorry. Wow, Mubot's doing everything except the things I want them to do today. I, I used to... I took Gilder into the final dungeon once. My, the, the true story about taking people into the final dungeon is that I've never taken Drachma in. Like, I just don't know why I would, unless I want to use him to spirit charge my way and use prophecy like all the time right i guess that i guess that's what the strategy would be right you would just and i bet you the speed this like i don't know the speedrun must use make good use of some things the speedrun like i wonder how it all works i'd be i should probably just watch one when well, enrique you take in that because he so has bad. justice he has justice shield justice shield for whatever reason i'm slurring it Yeah, he might do more damage. If it's a speedrun, I was I was gonna say if it's a speedrun, you would. I'm thinking about ship battles, and I'm wondering, would it be better for a speedrun to pick up Urala, um, so that they can have them for ship battles to get as much spirit points as as they could. Um, but then again, if it's a speedrun, like maybe not, right? I don't know. I wonder about that. Because, like, that would be super safe. Because then that means in certain battles you can do, like, th like, three rounds straight of Moonstone Cannon. Yeah, I'm gonna need to figure out the best way for me to download Hamacho Island. Oh, I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna, in the next couple of days, be looking up how to bring get my Dreamcast online again. Oh, that's gonna be so fucked up. 
Does ship value do anything in this version? I don't know. It's never really mattered that much. Um, as anything. Whoa, is your is your username in chat really Crystallis? That's fucking dope. Yeah, ship. I was gonna say ship value doesn't have much of a um purpose here. It's so funny that your name is Chris Crystallis. That's that dope. Easy. That's really cool. I love the fact that these streams bring out like such enthusiastic people. Um, because the people who care about this game really care about it. It's it's really amazing to me um, to see folks like you in chat. Um, does my heart really like it? Warms 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 my heart. Feels so good. One second. A fair amount of people in our comments on the website too are being like really excited to see this. It's really nice. They won't I don't they won't ever make a sequel to this. Sega is not incapable of making good games right now. Technically Ryo Ga Gotoku Studio is part of Sega. And they make Yakuza games, and Yakuza games are great. So there you go. There's my loophole around that. And I also don't hate Sonic Forces. Um, it's not great, but it was fun. Um, yeah, I like this. Vice is so nice, because he's like, hey... I believe that we'll find a way. Impossible is just a word that people use uh, to let themselves feel good about themselves when they quit. Uh, a little bit naive, uh, as real life tells us, but you know. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 was good. Uh huh. I liked it. You can tell I've been streaming a little while because my voice starts to get a little more tired. Ah, uh, we finally get to see the Empress. I'm Empress Theodora. <laughs> Gaussian with his giant cape. Oh -ho! I imagine we would see maybe a PC port. Maybe, like, right? That's such a big maybe, and then, like, I would think that they would do a good job with the part port, but, like, you know, we have crappy versions of, like, we've, we've got crappy versions of, you know, <laughs> Final Fantasy games and Chrono Trigger and whatever. Yeah, I like Fina in this scene, too, because Fina has this really wonderful tendency whenever she's in new areas to really question the power structures in front of her, because she doesn't care about the power structures. She, she's not from around here, by which I mean on, you know? So so the fact that she doesn't back down to Dine and she doesn't back down here is really great, I think. Um, I think it can be very easy to look at Fina and be like, oh, she's just a little soft white mage character. And yeah, a little bit, but also she's smart. Um, and she's insightful and she doesn't back down. It's really, really good. Um, and then, the, then we see Enrique for the first time. And it's so funny because like, this is an example of like, like the payoff for this isn't until much later, right? But eventually 
Enrique, which is very good. Well, my, my I have this, yeah. See, my my whole the thing you're talking about for for ports in the chat right now is the thing that scares me the most. I would want the Legends version, but I would want the Dreamcast music and like exactly music and textures. If they fucked that up, I'd be so sad. If I had to listen to like to the shitty MIDI versions of these songs, like I would immediately find a way to mod the originals into the game. See, in that in that picture there, her tattoo looks a little bit more like the way my tattoo looks. But the 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 turn <laughs> the turn of the base of my tattoo doesn't point up as sharply as her, and it kind of bums me out. Kill her. Yeah, all this stuff with Enrique is like, I don't know, it's kind of surprising. Like, the first time you play it and you're like, ah. My next uh, Sylvite tattoo is going to be, there's this picture of Fina and, and with young Ramirez that Itsuki Hoshi drew. And it shows one of his tattoos. I'm going to add that one. And then I'll have to decide like which one of the silver elder tattoos is like the coolest. Well, actually, I could do I could do Fina's um, shoulder tattoo. Yeah, for people who don't know, I have Fina's forehead tattoo um, on my uh, right forearm, just like just below my wrist. <laughs> For those who are kind of curious, there's the article about it, um, and I'll probably get. It's very subtle there. The thing that she's gasping about is that she recognizes Ramirez's name, which is funny because it implies that his name was always Ramirez, which that seems not tr true, right? That can't be so. It can't be like Fina and Silver Elder, whoever, and then a dude who happens to have like a value in name. But maybe. There's a fan fiction that writes about this and they say that his original name is Rami. They also give her the last name Silvarn. But yeah, I guess I guess we're supposed to believe that Ramirez's name was always Ramirez. Which is like Hmm, I don't know. It feels like something that, like, he would have, like, Mendoza would have given him, right, now that we know that that backstory exists, right? It feels like something Mendoza would be like, oh, your name is Ramirez. Doesn't one of the people in this town literally talk about gold toilets? Oh, the bathtub. <laughs> That's right. No, she does. The gold toilet. Oh, the silver toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Funny stuff. This kid's like, why don't they just eat cake? If they can't eat bread, why don't they just eat cake? <laughs> it's like super basic, but I do... Again, I appreciate that, like, they show you this part of value, right? The contrast kind of matters. Uh, I'm a relative of Admiral Alfonso. Oh, I'm sorry for my insolence. I did not realize you were such... Uh, you are such import. Somebody told me that they had, a, like, a feather tattoo or something once. I, a, a couple people have told me that they have Skies of Arcadia tattoos. One person told me they had a cat called Little Jack, which was, that's a pretty good cat name. Um, 
A lot of good stuff. Wow. No, um, I have a, uh, I have, I have a, like a model viewer so that I can view any of the character models in the game, which I used for Fina. So the the version of my tattoo that was that we were pulling off of was like from the facial model. So it's pretty close, but I think like the way that she, like she enhanced the size of it to make it the size we wanted, and I think that skewed some of the dimensions in a way that wasn't right. So my tattoo isn't perfect. Um, but I have a model viewer, which which I've used before to look at character models from this game. Um, so I'm probably going to try and get a good picture of her shoulder tattoo, which is a little nondescript. It's hard to kind of tell everything that's going on with it. Um, right, there's not a lot of detail on it, so we kind of have to extrapolate. Because um, maybe I'll do that tattoo and then Ramirez's tattoo from that image I was talking about. The train thing I remember is um, interesting to me because part of the train segment is in the um, the demo disc. The demo disc has a couple things. One of which is like you can just do a straight up ship battle, and the other is that it does um, <laughs> it does like a bunch of vignettes. One of which is fighting, I think, the guards here. Um, one of the vignettes it shows is the um, is the scene where Rocknum shows up for the first time. Uh, a couple, a couple of things. Hmm? Hey guys, let's fight Gaussian early and die. I was going to say, the game cannot account for you actually defeating Gaussian. I remember hearing that before, that it's soft locks. Yeah, but I remember seeing the demo discs of this. Um, like, seeing a moving train in a way that was like kind of more concrete than seeing the moving trains in like Final Fantasy VII was really impressive. Or like like these battle sequences, right? Seeing these even in a demo was just like, or I think they, they're they in the demo. It's just like really amazing. Um, also having that continuity between spaces is nice here. I mean, it's it happens in all games, but this game is very particularly good about it. Um, where kind of the space that you run through in a dungeon or in an overworld is fairly contiguous with the space that you fight in um, in the battle space which like it doesn't have to be because battles like we're video like video gamers and whatever like players are smart um, I mean it's easy to say like oh players are stupid but most players are smart um, and so we understand that you know these battle spaces are abstract spaces that represent whatever we're in. Just like how I said, hey, you know, we accept that numbers are abstractions of certain things. Like, you know, it's bullshit, but that's like, hey, this is why certain characters have certain stats, right? Um, and it represents something about them. Um, but these are uh, these are really good about the way they handle, um, like, the transfer from this space to the other space is great. Also, it's super fucked up because Gaussian gets here amazingly quick. I should just one day play the demo for you guys. Um, I do have it on my YouTube channel as part of like my nascent preservation uh, instincts. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. So this is only one portion of the Skies of Arcadia demo disc, but this is what they call the Laws of the Air Pirates. 
which is um, it tells you each of the parts of the air pirate code, like be audacious and all that, um, and it has a scene to accompany it. And I just have a playthrough of that on my YouTube channel as, like, my way of doing something resembling game preservation. Even though I have assets and stuff, and other people, there are other people here, even people in chat here who have assets. Um, but the demo is really cool. Uh, it's, it's really, really neat. Ika's doing piss poor damage right now because she just doesn't have a good weapon. But it has a, it has a lot of different things. It has um it has the opening scene where you are attacking the pirates like the Valuans. It has the stuff with um Rocknum for the first time. It has it has the very end of Decat's Island where you open the treasure chest. It has the battle against Antonio for the first time, and it has a couple other things. Um, oh, you know what it has, which is really surprising? It has the aftermath of the Beleza fight, where you get the Red Moon Crystal for the first time. Like, it's this really interesting hodgepodge of um, of things. I should have used uh, Ika's ability there. But I have that disc with me here in Brooklyn, which is pretty great. Um, and then, and then it has like its its own thing for like the menu has. Hey, it has a couple things. It has it has laws of the air pirates, which are like, hey, what what's this story about? It has an airship battle that you can jump into immediately. It has like a mini gauntlet of fights that you can do. It has a mini gauntlet of like four consecutive fights or something, four or five consecutive fights. And then it also has like overworld navigation. It has a little bit of everything. It's actually a really robust little demo for a demo disc demo. Um, it's actually kind of neat. Uh, I only have one part of that demo on there though. Um, the other RPG I'm playing right now uh, is I'm replaying. Uh, I'm replaying Final Fantasy 15 now. Do, do, do. Um, I, I, I think the gr one of the discs I have must have a Grandia 2 demo, um, which I can show off at some point. I, I would love to do that series where I just go through Dreamcast demo discs. I'm missing like one or two of them, but they're not that hard to get your hands on. Oh yeah, the Assassin's Blade can randomly poison sometimes. Counterattack? Yeah. Poison? That'd be amazing. I don't even know if you can counterattack, uh, do poison on a counterattack. Every now and then there are things about the the uh, battle system that I don't even know about. Yeah, it might have just been a trailer. Entirely possible. Um, I forget. The only demos that I really cared about were... There was a demo of this, obviously. There was a demo of 0079, Gundam 0079 Rise from the Ashes, which maybe I'll stream through one afternoon on this channel because that's a pretty short game. Um, and it's actually my favorite Gundam game. Um, and then there was, it was, I remember so like, the f it was like the first time, like when the, when um, the other big demo was Jet Grind Radio. And I say Jet Grind Radio because I think it was still called Jet Grind Radio, right? Or Jet Set Radio, whatever the fuck. Um, and that was such a big deal because cell shading was kind of new. And so getting a demo of that and, and seeing a cell shaded game like that was amazing, right? Um, you'd never seen that at the time. It was bananas. I think 0079 Rise from the Ashes holds up if you can, d if you accept the fact that it you don't have dual stick, right? Playing that game now after spending years and years with um, dual analog sticks can be hard because the Dreamcast doesn't have 
you know, two analog sticks. It has a D-pad and a single an and, a, a, and a single stick. Um, but yeah, the first time that like it's so funny too because you know what else was a thing that I played as a demo that had cell shading was thirteen which they just announced that they're doing some sort of remake or port for today. Um, a game that I don't think a lot of people were like, we really want a port of 13, um, but we're getting one, which should be pretty interesting. Moons, give me strength. Um, If you put this, uh, the thing I tell people is that if you put this in a, um, CD player, there's a secret message, just like if, when you put, um, Symphony of the Night into a CD player. Wow, really? Oh, well, yeah, it combines spaces. But Wevely actually hit both of them, which is good. Electrez. Yeah. They're like, put us back in the Dreamcast! Which, it's pretty funny. Like, it's so tempting to use Wevely again. I might for shits and giggles. We can't save the world from inside a CD player! Put us back in the Dreamcast so we can do our job! There is game data on track one. Oh, finally, opportunity. Listen to it. Wevely's a fantastic spell for this. <laughs> this is going to go into a crisis, though. This should be the end of the fight. Or the end of Vi's. Oh shit, this is gonna hit Vi's? Oh, look at his health. My darling baby. Way to go, buddy. Toughing it out near the end. That was a tough fight. Would I play that? Uh, would I play Smash if they put Vi's in it? I want to play Smash now that Joker's in it. Joker seems super fun to play as. Cecilia was playing as him today on the stream. It looked really cool. I'm not the biggest fan of Persona 5, or like the Persona series in general. I think it's cool, but... Um, you know, I think Persona 4, when you look back on it, has some pretty gnarly shit in it. And Persona 5 is just really long. Um, and none of them are quite as interesting as just, like, conceptually and weird as, like, some of the Shin, like, normal Shin Megami Tensei games. Um, but Joker looks like so much fun to play in Smash, so... And the stage that you can set to play different music or whatever looks so good. Um, so... There we go. Phoenix theme, one of my favorite bits of music in the game. When you let it go. Dun, 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 I, uh, it's a really good one. Like, she has a really good theme. Uh, Vice's theme is weird. <laughs> um, but it makes for a good remix in Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed.
You have caused a great deal of trouble, boy. What is your name? I thought you were the guy that cleaned the rail cars. Blah, blah, blah. Never. What if I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Fuck you. Oh, Fina's reaction. My favorite, I like when you, when you do the second value a thing and everybody reunites. It's fucking good. Um, I love the fact, because there's that whole moment where Fina's like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, like, by that point, everybody's so tight and she knows that you'll come and all sorts of stuff. It's so good. They're just good characters. And then also having Drachma show up here, like, it's so good. It's good again when he shows up, uh, <laughs> when uh, the Red Gigas stuff happens. Yeah, Drachma. Uh, Drachma. It's not like I cared about you guys or anything. Getting to use the, uh, it's so, it's actually, you know, I just realized that both times you get to use your special cannons for the first time, you're in Valua. Well, maybe I didn't, it's not the first time I've realized that, but I guess, I guess, I don't know, it's the first time I was cognizant of it on this playthrough. Yeah, close the gates, buddy. I like the dot 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 again. It's very funny. So we'll fire our special cannon. Harpoon cannon, fire! It's such a good moment. Once you realize you have this really neat mechanical tool. How much is it? 15. It's not terrible. I'm trying to sit up um, a little bit more straight here. <laughs> do, 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 do. It's neat that you get the chance for the Harpoon Cannon every round because it's just standing there like a blockade. So good. can't recall a thing about them. Do you remember this? Fire. 
I mean, it's not going to matter who fires the cannons in this fight. Even if it did matter. Um... Because this fight's designed so that the Harpoon Cannon always one shots. Main cannons, I was gonna say, main cannons matter, um, like your strength, like your strength stat matters for it. So like, in theory, I should have maybe not been using Drachma for evasion, but again, this fight, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. And then like magic stats matter, certainly. Do, 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 do. I'm just humming along to all the good stuff. The Pyramid Dungeon and building out your town. Yeah. We'll get to the Pyramid Dungeon in like the next two streams. I'm gonna have to figure out like how often I'm gonna be doing this, but one of the things that we that I we made a change of was doing more daytime streams with more different like people, like Paul, Gita, and Tim, um, other folks sometimes, and then also like um, I used to stream like multiple nights a week for long periods of time, um, but it was just too much. Another um, complaint I have about my tattoo is that it doesn't quite, the arc of the, the point on Fina's thing, it, it turns inward into the circle at a slightly steeper, um, like, more gentle angle. Mine kind of turns a little more sharply. These are the complaints of a super fan. She's a Sylvite. Silver civilization. She tells us all about the, uh, the G Gigas. Rakumin, Grendel, all of them. Yeah, she doesn't quite explain to them what it means when she's like, hey, I'm from the Silver Civilization. Um, she doesn't like she doesn't come out and say to them, I don't I don't live on your fucking planet uh, yet. Grendel's my favorite Gigas. It's such a cool design. Now we get our plot to find all the magic crystals. Yelligar? That's such a weird looking Gigas though. It kind of looks like a like a spider crab. I like, uh... Here's Visa's theme for, like, one of the few times it actually plays in the game. Um... Yeah. I like when Grendel... When <laughs> there's that moment uh, where, um... All the value in ships are firing at Grendel, and Grendel just turns around and like sucker punches them out of the sky. It's really good. Oh, cupel, my bud. 
My controller's vibrating whenever he pops out now. stream still going? My feed went weird. Okay, good. So we'll have to go talk to our dad. The person who designed, who designed Fang the Sniper, otherwise sometimes known as Knack the Weasel? Designed Cupel? That's... Interesting. Oh no, we're all the way up here. But also, oh yes, we're all the way up here. Which means that we get to climb all this. What a thrill. Darkness and silence through the night. <laughs> Just here. I'm still in a dream, snake eater. Some days you go through the rain. Some days you feed on a tree frog. Oh, I have to sing it backwards? Yeah, no way. I give my life not for honor, but for you. I can't go that high without, well, I can't go that high and be quiet. Um, there's a, there's a ladder in, a, in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater where you climb it. And it plays the, it, it is such a long, tall ladder that it plays the entirety of the game's theme song while you climb it. I'm coming down here to get my first cham, by the way. You guys will be able to hear my um, VMU chirp. And then after that, we're gonna end the stream. Right? It should, yeah, it should be right here. You can climb onto this pole, something which, uh... <laughs> which my girlfriend didn't know. She, she might be watching. Are you ready, hun? <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> it's also an easier way for me to get to dine. But we'll save before we talk to Dime. <laughs> and that's it. That's the stream for tonight. Yeah, you can climb the pole too. Um, this was good. We'll get back into it. I'll start streaming more regularly. My my job 